You're, you're, you're tuned into the stellar, stellar award winning internet radio station. You're at the right place at the right time. Yes, Lord Radio. Hold up. Wait just a minute. It's Roz on your radio. Yo. Keep it locked right here. Showcase fellowship inspired. Show, 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 show. Showcase. Hey, it's Roz on the radio. Show, 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 showcase. Showcase fellowship inspired. Yes, Lord Radio. Now it's time for another Yes, Lord Radio exclusive. Hey, everybody. It's Roz on the radio, and you're listening to another YLR exclusive. My guest today is a pastor, gospel recording artist, and author, Dr. Marvin Sapp, who has a new book, reality show, and music from his latest album, I Win. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, tell us how your experience has been on the Kingsmen's tour. It was awesome, and it is awesome. Last night, we uh, did our show in Los Angeles, and on tomorrow, we'll be in San Francisco, and um about six, seven thousand people there last night. We already did Phoenix and fifty five hundred people. So it's just been a wonderful event and uh I'm challenging everybody to get out there and get your tickets because it's gonna be an amazing moment. Wow, and it's ending soon, guys. It's actually ending mid October, October fourteenth. In Brooklyn, New York, that's the last show. Now I wanna get into the nitty gritty as I call it. <laughs> I'm looking at your album cover, which I love. I think the uh, imagery is, it's it's wonderful. It's brilliant, whoever came up with that. But you're standing on what seems to be on the top of a mountain. And obviously, people know a little about what you've been through. But I get a very satisfying feeling knowing that the message that you're sending to us is that you can win. And this is very relevant to the discussion today because I've been asking people to share their stories of when their faith had been tested and how they were able to unleash the power of faith to deal with their particular struggles. So I want to pose that same question to you. Well, you know, I think that what people need to understand first and foremost is that being a winner is a mentality before it's a destination. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, you know, even in the midst of challenging and complex times, we have to make sure that we have a mental mindset that no matter what happens, we understand that we're winners in spite of how difficult life circumstances may seem to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I, I, I try to explain to people that, you know, again, being a winner is a mentality first. Um, you just don't come out being a winner. You gotta train, you gotta practice, you gotta put stuff together in order to ensure, to make sure, um, that once you do cross the finish line, that you cross the finish line on top based upon the, uh, practices and, and training that you put in before you get to the starting blocks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my life has been, been challenging. I've gone through some major things over the last uh, three years of my life and, um, you know, even though I've experienced some some heart wrenching things that would cause people to give up, I yes. started glaring and praying on the on, on the front end that I was a winner, so that once I get to the back end, you know, I, I can become what I speak to declare and decree. Oh wow, that's wonderful! So your motivational moments that you have uh, been posting on Facebook, and so now I'm excited that there's actually a book about this. So tell us about the inspiration for this book, and if there is one that you can think of, one of your favorite motivational moments. Well, you know, Marvin's motivational moments actually kind of started um, because I couldn't sleep after the passing of my wife, and I began to think about all of the things that we used to talk about. And um, I didn't have a Facebook, I didn't have a Twitter, I didn't have a social camp. And uh, my son created it for me, believe it or not. And uh, after creating my, my Facebook page, after creating my Twitter page, you know, you can only watch so much TV. And <laughs> well, right. um, so I would go on Facebook and um, I started posting conversations, thoughts, ideas, things that you and I used to talk about all the time. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, it, it, and I just started saying this is Father's motivational moment. And it kind of just, it blew up. And when I say it blew up, it, it, we started off with, you know, nothing 20 months ago. And now we have, you know, almost a million people, over, over a million people that we are connected to on a given basis between uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and social chat. So, you know, it's, it's a mind blowing thing to me. And, uh, you know, just, just those concepts, ideas, thoughts, relationship thoughts, and then it blossomed into a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I 
ask how many people would be interested in purchasing uh, a book of, of motivational moments, and um, 40,000 people said that they would love to have it. So we wow. um, have a book, and um, it can be purchased on my website at marvinsap.com, or they can uh, get it for, as a hard copy from marvinsap.com, or as a uh, ebook as well. And uh, so, yeah, it can only be purchased purchased on my website though. And um, I mean, it's it's done extremely well since um, the debut of the book on July fourth. We've sold over three thousand books, and it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So tell us about that one uh, motivational moment that sticks out to you, whether it's one that you've used or one that people just love to share. Well, you know what I. <laughs> I started doing this thing called Message for Me to My Future, and I kind of backed off of it because, you know, um, being single now, uh, a widow, if you will, but being single, you know, sometimes people misunderstand. Um, well, let me say this. I, it's a concept. I'm not talking to a particular individual. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, so I, 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 lately I've had to, you know, stress that. And um, so, so I came up with this concept called Message for Me to My Future. And, mm-hmm. and it's based on the whole thing, the whole premise of, you know, speaking of those things that be not as though they were, mm-hmm. um, based on the premise of Scripture, when it talks about the whatsoever he has compared to leaving, that, you know, that shall you receive. So, you know, even though I, I, I understand women are not supposed to search, you know, the Bible talks about man, let's find it, a wife, find the good thing. Mm-hmm. So it's the responsibility of the man searching. A woman can be specific in her asking. She can be very specific in what she believes God for. Mm-hmm. And when it comes, or when it doesn't come, she can reject it if she so deems it to be. So I started doing this thing called Message for Me to My Future. And, 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 and this is my favorite one because it's in my book. I, I said something to the fact that um, I had a dream about you last night. I said, in that dream, um, you were dressed and you were standing in the mirror. And I walked up behind you, and I put my arms around you. I didn't say a word. I just had a very, very huge smile on my face. You asked me, what was I smiling at? And I responded, the rest of my life. So, hope God. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Somebody's gonna somebody's going to steal that and and say that is a good line. <laughs> That's beautiful though. It really is. It is. Now, um, wow. It's interesting to see the growing number of faith based uh, reality shows. We're gonna talk a little bit about that, but these reality shows are hitting TV. But I'm excited that this type of programming is actually hitting mainstream markets. So, uh, tell us about your new reality show and uh, what can we expect. Well, you know, Marvis, I've seen with that is it's something that is it's a show about me and my children, how we have adjusted as it pertains to passing on my wife and, and, and we don't call it a reality show as much as we call it a docu series. Yes. Um, because it, it chronicles, if you will, you know, how my children have adjusted from my son transitioning and moving to Atlanta to become a freshman at Morehouse to my my teenage girls growing and blossoming and and then to how I manage um, being uh, a father, a recording artist, um, the founder of the first ever performing arts and uh, performing arts charter school, middle and high school charter school in West Michigan, um, pastor my church. I mean, so it, it really kind of chronicles all of that. And then, then on top of that, most importantly, mm-hmm. what I would really, really does is it gives us an opportunity to be seen in a different light. You know, so many um, people see us in reality situations, or docu-series situations, and it's all about cussing and fighting and popping bottles and, exactly. you know, you know, unbelievable drama. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm not saying that it, that, that drama is not entertaining because it is. Um, but what I am saying is, is that, you know, every um, urban individual, African-American individual, um, doesn't live that type of life. That's right. And there are some of us out here who, you know, are trying to um, live decent lives and, and be good fathers um, and, and, and not be deadbeat dads. Right. Um, and that's what it's really all about. You know, our focus is to ensure and to make sure that we get the opportunity to see both sides of our community, not just the drama-filled side of our community and, 
cheating boyfriends, but that they are, are men of integrity who have family values and really want to raise their children and, 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 and be bothered by them and do the right thing. Yes. Yeah, so what has been the most difficult to you raising two girls as a single dad? Having to go down the aisles I never had to go down before. <laughs> <laughs> I love read. it. I did, a, <laughs> I did something on this, 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 this. The difficult thing is having to read packages that say stuff like heavy flow. <laughs> and wings and, and, and overnight. Oh, my goodness. And they're like, Dad, don't look. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, certain things are different. You know, um, you know, one of the major blessings, you know, my girls are older. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they... they you know, being 13 and 15, you know, they're kind of, um, you know, they're into their own thing. And, and, yes. and I just have to have conversations with them now, you know, about, you know, uh, do you have all the feminine uh, needs that you need before yeah. daddy needs now? Things of that nature. And they're, they're very verbal with me. So, because we're a very, very close to you, so, you yeah. know, they don't have what they need. They'll text a call. Okay. So, how did you help them to transition? through the struggles that, of course, that we're talking about now? How did you help your children to, uh, and and I know that they, I can't imagine making a full transition, but how did you uh, work with them in that area? Honestly, believe it or not, it, it, was, it was smoother than I thought it would have been. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason being is my children were children of faith. You know, we, yes. we taught faith in the home. Um, they understood that, you know, mommy's transition, if you will, um, from life to afterlife. Um, that she's not lost um, because they're Christian children. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they saw her struggle and they saw her suffer and, and, and they understood that, you know, rather than her suffering, that they would rather for her to go to a better place. Yes. Uh, but not only that, but my life, my profession was a licensed psychologist and college professor in psychology and sociology. Okay. And so, of course, you know, it was a natural progression for us to, to get counseling, to seek it. Um, you know, in, in, in the African American community, the sad thing is, is that, you know, we don't believe in that for the most part. You know, right. we believe in praying too, but we don't believe in sitting with people to have them to help us process, you know, our emotions and, and to go through the grieving process. And I, I made sure that my kids were in that type of situation where they got the opportunity to talk to someone who was non-biased mm-hmm. about how they were feeling and about their emotions. And because of that, um, I believe they're healthy individuals. Well, I can appreciate you for sharing that with us today because you are I totally agree with you. People that are in faith-based communities, some people are very on the extreme side, I would say, you know, I don't need a doctor. I'm going to just put all my trust in Jesus, which is good, but I think that he provides things to us. And this is no different. People don't want to go talk to somebody else about their issues. And I thank you again for sharing that with us. Now, we're getting ready to get out of here. But before we do that, I want to share with our listeners the latest single from your project, I Win. And it's titled, I Win. Just share with us briefly the inspiration uh, from that particular song. So this song was written by a young lady named Brittany Wright. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, she sang it at a conference that I was preaching at. And when I heard her sing this song, I mean, it was my life. It was actually what I was going through, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I never told her this, but what I did do was that night when she sung it at the conference that I was preaching at, I stood up in the pulpit and I said, you have to let me record this song because what you just sang is, 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 is how I feel. And wow. it's what I've been experiencing and, and, and it's what I'm going through. And, and what you did was, is you just sighed through and delivered me out of, you know, the situation that I'm, been, been struggling with mm. by letting me know that even though stuff is crazy, I still win. And um, she allowed me to record it. And, you know, I didn't tell her that I was going to make it the title cut of my record. Wow. Um, but yeah. I did. And we got a brand new video out with it as well just recently. Drop called I Win. So, I mean, again, as I stated at the beginning of our conversation, that being a winner is a mentality before it's a destination. Mm-hmm. So, think 
Fuck a winner and you become one. Wonderful. Well, guys, we're going to get out of here. But before we do, of course, share your comments with us on our YLR shop box and meet us on YLR on our Facebook page. Keep up with me on Facebook.com and Twitter.com, of course, at Roz on the radio. And Pastor Marvin, uh, how can everybody stay connected to you? Of course, they can go to, if they want to get my motivational moments, they can go to the official Marvin Zapp page on Facebook. Or they can follow me at Marvin Zapp at Twitter or at Marvin Zapp on social, Marvin Zapp at social cam as well. And uh, any more information, just go to MarvinZapp.com. You're, you're, you're tuned into the stellar, stellar award winning internet radio station. Showcase, you're at the right place at the right time. Yes, Lord Radio. Showcase, you're at the right place at the right time. Yes, Lord Radio. <laughs> Showcase Fellowship Inspire. Hey, everybody, it's Roz on the radio, bringing you the YLR exclusives from your favorite artist. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Roz on the radio to find out who's next. You're listening to YesLordRadio.com. Showcase Fellowship Inspire.